Hello friends, welcome to today's video where we're going to show you everything you need to know about EV training your Pokemon in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. EVs or effort points as they're otherwise known are hidden numbers that affect a Pokemon's final stat points. Every Pokemon can be trained with up to 510 EVs with no more than 252 being put into one particular stat. Now there are two ways for you to EV your Pokemon in Brilliant Diamond, Shine and Pearl. There is the what I would like to coin method the hard way and there is the easy way. We'll cover all of these methods in today's guide but how do you check your EVs in games? To check a Pokemon's EVs if you click Click in on their summary screen and then go across to their Pokemon skills page. You'll be able to see an array of stats related to this Pokemon along with their ability and the nature effect that it has on the stats. On this page, if you toggle the X button, it will then give you an overview of where the EVs are on this Pokemon. Currently, as this Gibble is a brand new egg that we've hatched, it's got no EVs. Whereas if your Pokemon has been fully EV trained, you can see the darker blue shade over the top of the yellow, indicating that the EVs have been distributed in attack and speed. The sparkly effect that you get over the text indicates that that particular stat has been maxed out. It has 252 EVs in that stat. Another indicator that you can check your EVs is by going to Sunny Shore City. Once here, if you take this route from the Pokemon Center, you'll be able to go into this building right here and you can speak to this NPC character right here. And if you've got the Pokemon at the top of your party, she will review it. And if it has maximum EVs, if it has that 510 EV mark, it will be given the effort ribbon. And as you can see, this is on the Gibble that we have got maximum EVs in. Now, unlike the Gibble that we've just hatched, this Infernape is something that I used in my playthrough. It's battled a bunch of different Pokemon, so it has a very varied EV spread. You can see here, nothing is maxed out in regards to a single stat, but the EVs are spread around indicated by the blue shading over each stat point. If you, like myself, would like to maybe re-EV this Infernape or one of your starter Pokemon that you used in the playthrough, then you can utilize these berries. So to remove EVs from a Pokemon, you can use one of the six berries available in the game. There is the Pomeg berry, which reduces HP, the Kelpsy berry, which reduces attack, the Qualop berry, which reduces defense, Honju berry, which reduces special attack, the Grepper berry, which reduces special defense, and the Tomato berry, which reduces speed. Now using one of these berries will reduce the EVs in a single stat by 10. So to remove a maxed out EV stat, you're gonna to need to use 26 of these Pomeg berries. And the same can be said for the other berries relating to other stats. So as an example, how to use these berries, what we're gonna do is just remove all the EVs from this Inferno. I wanna click on a Pomeg berry as we've got an array of different EVs on the Inferno. We're gonna to have to probably use a bunch of berries to do this. So the first one, if you just click down on it, you'll see we'll use seven Pomeg berries and we'll remove 70 HP EVs. Next we'll go to Kelpsy berry just to make sure that we've got everything this time we'll go down it'll click into nine Kelpsy berries so we'll use that i'll take away 90 attack evs next we'll go with the qualip berry just to make sure that we get rid of any defense evs again we're going to go down and it'll go automatically to nine and if you go back into the berry and you use one it says it won't have any effect next we'll try and clear all of the special attack evs with the honju berries that will remove a hundred special attack evs we'll check with the grepper berry to remove any special special defense we'll go with that we'll go down and it will only remove 30 EVs using three grepper berries and then finally we'll remove the last EVs on this inferno using the tomato berry and we'll click down again using 15 tomato berries which removes 150 EVs. Now if we go back into our summary screen for Infernip, we should see a similar thing to what we saw with the EV spread on our Gibble where there aren't any EVs distributed to the, the Infernip now and it's ready to re-EV. So far we've covered a brief overview of what EVs are, how you can distinguish what they are in game and how you can remove them. Now with the EVs removed from our Infernape, we are ready to re-EV it. So we'll go over method one in this guide, which is battling wild Pokemon. As I mentioned, battling wild Pokemon, every time you do battle a Pokemon, it will give you a certain EV in a particular stat point. And I say this is the harder method because it is definitely the slower method of the two, but there are a couple of tools that you can use to help speed this process up. To speed up the EV process of battling wild Pokemon, you can use 
use some items. Now what you want to do is head to the fight area. Obviously you're going to only have access to this part of the game after you've beat the Elite Four, but once you're here you're able to go up into the battle zone. Now to obtain these items you're going to have to have some battle points, so you will have to do a little grinding prior to buying these items, but once you have them you can come to the battle zone shop here and once inside you can speak to the NPC character on the left. Once you speak to her, you'll be able to go into an array of items and the ones that we're looking for to help out with EVing are gonna be the power items. You've got the power bracer, the power belt, power lens, power band, power antlet, and power weight. All of these items cost 10 battle points each and whenever they are attached to a Pokemon when they have a wild encounter, they give an additional eight EVs per battle. The other thing that will speed up the EV in process by battling wild Pokemon is your Pokemon having Pokerus. Now Pokerus is a Pokemon virus that can be found randomly on wild Pokemon. It is extremely rare but if you do have a Pokemon with this you can put it at the top of your party, go into a battle and it will spread to the other party Pokemon. So you can spread it around to other Pokemon that you have meaning they will double the EVs from every battle they participate in speeding up the whole process exponentially. So as we're about to EV our Infernape up, what we're gonna do is give it a spread of 252 EVs in its attack and 252 EVs in its speed with the remaining EVs put into its HP. As you can see the power bands here, we've got the power antlet that gives you that additional eight EVs in speed. The power band refers to special defense. The power belt increases EV yield from defense. The power bracer gives you an increased EV yield on attack power lens gives you that increase on special attack and the power weight gives you the increase in hp so because we're going for attack and speed we'll start off with the power bracer and we'll give it to our inferno now one of the best places to ev train your attack stat is going to be on route 202 this is a route just south of Sagam Town, and then once you come to the grass area you want to try and encounter a shinx now for every time you battle a Shinx, you will receive one EV in your attack stat. Now if you have the Power Bracer attached to your Pokemon that you're EV training, and you also have the Pokerus, that yields one EV from the Shinx, plus the eight from the Power Bracer, and then you times that by two with the Pokerus, and that will give you 18 EVs per battle. So to get to a maximum of 252 EVs in your attack stat, you're gonna have to battle 14 Shinx to max out your attack. But bear in mind, if you do have other Pokemon in your party when doing this, they will also receive EVs from the Pokemon that you're battling, due to the experience share that is spread over every Pokemon in your party. So after a total of 14 Shinx battled with our Infernape, and if we go into the summary screen, we'll be able to see that the EVs are maxed out now in attack after 14 battles with the Shinx, because we have got the Pokerus and also the Power Bracer attached. Bear in mind, if you haven't got Pokerus, you're gonna be doubling this process, so it would be 28 battles for Shinx with the Power Bracer attached, and that is respective of any stat that you're training. Next up, we need to train Infernape in its speed EV stat. So we're gonna give it the power antlet, which is the item that refers to speed EVs, and we wanna make our way to route two or one. You can go from Sagam Town or Twinleaf Town, and once here you want to just make your way to the grassy areas and this time we want to be encountering Starly. Now for Starly every time you battle it it will give you one EV point in your speed stat. So with the power antlet attached to your Pokemon you're going to be receiving a plus eight boost from that item and then you're going to times it by two so one EV stat from Starly plus the eight from the power antlet gives nine times that by two with the Pokerus. Again that is going to yield 18 EVs in your speed stat so resulting in 14 battles, 14 Starly you're going to have to defeat until you're able to max out your EVs in speed. So once once again, after you've defeated the 14th Starly in this chain, you'll be able to max out your EVs in speed with the power antler attached and the Pokerus on your Pokemon. As you can see, if we go into the summary screen here for Infernip, it should have maxed EVs out in both its attack and its speed. You can tell this again, as we mentioned earlier, by the sparkling effect over the text. Now we only have four EVs left 
to put in its remaining stats and for hp we want to be using the power weight item so we're going to just give this to our infernape that will make the process a lot quicker we can stay on the same route at 201 because Bidoof also spawn in this location and the thing with Bidoof is they will give a payout of 1 HP EV every time you battle them with the power weight attached to our Pokemon that is plus 8 so we don't need to even have Pokerus for these remaining EVs that we would need to do to max out our Infernape so one battle is going to be enough here with the power weight attached if not if you didn't have the power weight or Pokerus you're going to have to battle 4 Bidoofs to get those 4 EVs to maximize the EV spread on your Pokemon on and with that one battle the infernip should be fully max EV'd. Now we already have the effort ribbon on our infernip so we can't go back and get another one unfortunately but we can see from the poker scale screen if we hit the X button we toggle that we can see that all our EVs are maxed out and the Infernip is completely re EV'd. Now we'll go over all of the locations around the Sinner region where you can encounter different Pokemon for different EVs based on the stats that you're looking to EV train. As we've mentioned, for HP, Bidoof is on 201. So you can encounter Bidoof in this area and you can also encounter Starly, which gives you those speed EVs. For your attack EVs, you want to be heading to Route 202, which is just north of Sagam Town, and you want to be encountering Shinx. Every time you encounter Shinx, it will give you one EV per battle. To EV your defense, you want to be heading to Aubra City and heading to the Aubra Mine. When you're in the mine, you will be able to encounter Geodude and Onyx. Both of these Pokemon will give you one defense EV every time you battle them. To train your special attack EVs, you want to come to Eterna City and then head into Eterna Forest. Once in Eterna Forest, you're going to want to head up to the Old Chateau. And in the Old Chateau, you can encounter Ghastly. Every time you encounter and defeat a Ghastly, you will be rewarded with one special attack EV. For special defense EV training, you want to head to Flamora Town. And once here, you want to make your way out onto Route 205. And there will be a strip of water where you can surf, which will take you to the Valley Windworks. Surfing in here will allow you to encounter the Pokemon Tentacool, which will give you one EV in special defense every time you defeat it. And for those speed EVs, you want to head back down to either Sagam Town or Twinleaf Town and head back out onto Route 201. We've already talked about this when we were encountering Bidoof. It is the same location, but once here, you want to be heading out to any grassy patches on this route and encountering Starly. Anytime you encounter Starly, you'll get one speed EV every time you defeat it. It's also worth noting that some of the Pokemon that we've listed for EV training can be encountered using the Pokemon Radar. If you use the Pokemon Radar, it can guarantee you that whatever Pokemon you first encounter will be the Pokemon that you will always encounter if the chain continues. So it can be very useful. As you see here, we encountered a Bidoof. We've started a Bidoof chain. So if we were looking to train our Pokemon up with HP EVs, this would be a really easy way for us to continue a chain, guarantee that every encounter that we're gonna get in future is a Bidoof, making the whole process a lot quicker to EV our Pokemon. So that's about everything you're gonna to need to know for EV training when doing the wild Pokemon encounters. We give you the list of the Pokemon where they're located for each individual stat, so you can go out and do that. Now we'll move on to the next method in EV training that you can use, which I would say is the quickest method and the one I would always go to and that is by using vitamins. Now to get vitamins in game they are available in Veilstone City in the department store. You want to make your way to the department store and head up to the second floor. Once you're on the second floor you want to speak to this cashier behind the desk and they will sell all of the vitamins that you're going to need. They do cost 9,800 polka dollars each and each vitamin gives 10 EVs to the particular stat that it is related to. So if you were to give one protein to your Infernip, it would essentially be giving it 10 EVs. To max out one stat from just vitamins, you're going to need 26 vitamins in that particular stat. Though to optimally do it, you could buy 25 and then go and battle the Pokemon for the additional two rather 
are wasting a whole vitamin. So for this example, we're gonna take 26 of our carbos and 26 of our protein. We've already got a HP in our bag, so we can fully max out our gibble in our party. As you can see, this is the gibble that we've got. It is freshly hatched. It has no EVs in it so far. What we're gonna do is use the vitamins that we've just purchased. There is no cap on using the vitamins. We wanna use 26 in speed. We want to use 26 in attack and we want to finish off the remaining EVs in HP and that will automatically max out the EVs on this gibble. Now we go back into the gibble. This will give us a spread of 252 in attack, 252 in speed and it will give us four in HP. And as you can see, the attack and speed have been maxed out and it is literally that quick. The only drawback to this process is you're gonna need a lot of money to do it, but we have plenty of ways to farm money in the game I've already covered two money farming videos here on the channel. I'll link them right now for you. So you can utilize these methods, combine them with the EV training for vitamins and just have a breeze. You can also purchase vitamins from the fight area. Again, the same area where we bought our power items from earlier. You wanna to speak to the NPC on the left and in here, again, you're gonna need battle points to do this, but you can buy proteins and all of the vitamins for one battle point each, which is considerably cheaper probably than buying them. Although at the moment we don't have a consistently good way to farm battle points where we do with money. So I definitely recommend using the second method. It is a much faster method, but it only depends on having enough money. Like I've mentioned, we've done two money farming videos guides here on the channel that you'll be able to combine with this method to make sure that you've got enough cash to be able to fund EV in your whole team. It is gonna cost a little bit over 500,000 poker dollars to train one Pokemon with just vitamins, but you can reduce this down slightly and go for that 252 number or 25 vitamins and then get that two extra by going and battling the Pokemon in the wild, two battles if you don't have a power band or the poker rest. But with the vitamin method, it is a lot quicker. You don't need to worry about getting the power bands. You don't need to worry about contracting pokerus in the game and it is definitely the method i would recommend thank you so much for tuning in to today's guide if you have enjoyed it do consider dropping a like on the video and also if you do enjoy the content here do think about subscribing to the channel for more content like this all guides in brilliant diamond and shining pearl and i will see you all for another guide very soon so until then take care of yourselves and bye bye